joy. It's a very, very simple word, sometimes overused, very much underappreciated. We are drawn to people who are joyful, movies, television. I think Jimmy Fallon is a great example of being joyful. Also in sports, seeing someone like Michael Jordan stick his tongue out as he dunks the ball, nothing's more exciting than seeing someone really loving what they do. In fact, these TED Talks are a great example of joy. It's not just the information that you're hearing today, which is all wonderful, but it's actually witnessing the person's passion and joy for that. That's the most attractive part of it, I think. Now, I'm a symphony conductor, and my job is basically to be as joyful and as inspirational as possible on the podium, to inspire my musicians to play with as much joy as possible. It's an incredible privilege. So to give you a little bit of a flavor of what I do, let's take a look at me working with some kids at Interlochen. We have a moral responsibility to this world to keep beauty alive, and that's only by making it relevant. I don't believe anyone is just here to have a summer job. I think people are here to actually believe, and when you look in these young people's eyes, you see hope. I mean, how can you not tell someone who's 16 and 17 year years old and tell them they can make a difference, and they actually believe you? You can't lie to them, so you have to give them the tools to make that difference. Every string section needs to listen to the violas. They have yup up 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 They are our master. Here we go. You know, every night I go home to sleep and I wonder, did I push them too much? I wonder, did I demand too much of them? I'm asking of things that even you know, professional musicians in their 40s, 50s can't necessarily conceive. And I get up in the morning and I go to rehearsal and I'm just about to apologize <laughs> and they're doing it. Angelique was performing and she was looking over and she was giving. And, and yesterday at the rehearsal she was like looking at me not knowing what to do. And she went home and she digested it and she came back and she spit it back in. And you know, that kind of miracle happens every day, every week in Wiso, And that's what, what inspires me to keep pushing and pulling them to further heights. So being an orchestra conductor is a fabulous laboratory for me to investigate how to inspire people to be joyful. There are some great examples out there. I'm not inventing something new. There are some orchestras out there that are extraordinarily joyful. One that's become basically viral on YouTube for classical music is the Venezuela Youth Orchestra under the direction of Gustavo Dudamel. They're part of a system called El Sistema. Now, they're not from Berlin, and they're not from Paris, and they're not from London or New York. They're from Venezuela, which tells you that it's possible for an entire culture, an entire ecosystem to be joyful. How many of you have never been to a symphony concert in your life? Good. Would you go to see that? Absolutely. I, I get it. That's joy. But, and that's at a very, very high level. But joy doesn't have to be 
technically virtuosic. It can happen to, in any place for anyone. And one of the most beautiful symphonies that I've ever seen is from, of all places, the Congo. And this orchestra, these are musicians who don't have formal training. All they have is joy and the love of making music. And they come together and they tackle the most audacious goal to perform Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. How perfect, because in the final movement, as the chorus and singers, are, soloists are singing, they're singing about joy, Freude, Freude, Freude. That's the essence of Beethoven. That's the essence of, of joy. And on the night of the performance, in this rented warehouse, Beethoven came alive. For the shallow gust of her cups, or tell how the lazy home. called the Ode to Joy, the last movement of Beethoven's last symphony. It has been played with more expertise before, but with more joy, hard to imagine. And that's probably the most sincerest example of joy from their hearts. But it doesn't only have to exist in the arts, it exists in life. One example for, that I can think of was in the Food Network about um, a couple of years ago, burst upon the scene a gentleman who made cooking seem like a, a sport or a rock show. His name was Emeril Lagasse. Again, you can then put in the lady finger and then a little bam, <laughs> just a little. Just a little bam. <laughs> then I like to just hit it with another bit of whipped cream. <laughs> okay? And there you have it. A little tapioca parfait. And he helped revolutionize what cooking shows are all about through joy. Very, very simple. And this can occur in business as well. I can think of two people in particular. Steve Jobs, who didn't just manufacture phones or computers, but his dream was to unite technology and the human imagination and to completely make it free. And if you've ever seen an Apple com commercial as well, it's full of joy and that you want to aspire to that joy. And of course, Walt Disney. Before, amusement parks were just basically carnival rides assembled together, but he had a completely different way of imagining what it could be to be a child again, even if you're an adult. So we know now that joy is an extremely important ingredient for success, right? The most ex exceptional people in the world were driven by some kind of joy. Well, if we know that, why don't we teach joy? We teach math and science, which are all very important. But wouldn't it be more special and unique if we actually taught joy, a joy 101, if you will? It would probably give our kids the best leg up in the world market. Other people are teaching to the test, but one of the greatest attributes of American entrepreneurship is passion and joy. We know it, why don't we teach it? Well, some people think that it can't be taught. Like you're left-handed and you're right-handed, You've got blue eyes or you've got brown eyes, and that's the hand that you're dealt. There's nothing you can do about it. I couldn't disagree more. How many of you have had at least one teacher, at least one teacher, who made you passionate about something or, or made you passionate about learning? Yes, at least one. And so if that's the case, we know it's not an accident and it can be done. We just need to give teachers the tools, how to teach passionately, and we have to make it a priority in our society that joy is extremely important for the future of our children. 
Well, assuming that joy works in schools, it also, again, is good for business. And one of the greatest examples is Google. You all know that Google is considered to be one of the most sought after jobs because the, jo the, the worker satisfaction is extraordinarily high. Why? Well, they understand the nature of joy. They serve the most delicious and healthy food in their cafeteria, and it's free. <laughs> they have fun things to do on their campus. You can do rock climbing and other sports. They make joy part of a benefit. Because they understand that if an employee is joyful, they're more creative and more effort. The more creative they are, the more productive they are, and the more productive they are, more profit. It's a no-brainer. They understand that. So let's talk about, assuming that we all embrace the importance of joy, how can we be joyful? Well, like I said, I've been experimenting for years on how to teach people to be joyful, but I'll just share three of them with you. First, very important, is be a driver and not a passenger. Sometimes orchestras, they sit back and they wait for some great maestro to show up on the podium and they look at them and go, inspire me. And I think we do that as teachers as well, or, or as students. We sit in our chairs and we say, inspire me. Well, you can't wait for lightning to hit you. You have to be the lightning itself. There is a contractual agreement that when you come to school, that the teacher will inspire you and fill, fill you up with joy, but you have to come to the table with an open mind as well. I can't tell you how many times people come up to me and go, oh, I used to play the piano, I used to play the violin, but I gave it up. It kills me. Because I know it's not them. When people come to my concerts, and if they like it or didn't like it, they're not sure because they go, well, I don't know anything about music. And it kills me because I know that in the right hands, anything can be interesting, right? Anything can be interesting. What do you do if you don't connect with your teacher? Well, you live in a blessed age of YouTube. You can go and find someone who's actually passionate about it. We got a million hits. Learn what it is to be passionate about that subject. Don't give up. It's not you. It's not you. Next, I would suggest to foster your inner child. Some of the happiest people on the planet are children, right? You're automatically playful, you go to a playground, you love to play. Somewhere along the way, children want to be adults. They want to be treated like adults, they want to have voting rights, they want to drive a car. But you lose something in that process. Something happens where you become serious. I often joke that to my musicians, sometimes as classical musicians, we often have two emotions. One is serious, and one is more serious. <laughs> and I get a bigger laugh from musicians because they understand as well. You need to understand that the child inside of you is unfiltered, brave, courageous, creative, when I have had the pleasure of meeting and working with some of the greatest artists, people like Yo-Yo Ma, or James Taylor, or Johnny Cash, the thing that I'm struck with is this childlike innocence and wonderment. To be miraculously amazed by things is a gift, and we lose it. Don't lose it. Treasure it. Acknowledge who you were when you were eight years old. Embrace that person and keep them with you for the rest of your life. Next is a bit abstract, but it's, oh, forgive me. The next one is practice being joyful. Now you go, no, how can you be joyful? Again, you're either joyful, joyful or you're not. I believe you can train yourself to be more joyful. First, I would suggest awaken your senses. To be excited about something means that you're receptive. Have you ever eaten a scoop of ice cream? and you love the first bite, mmm, delicious. Then you eat the second bite, that's good too. And the third bite, uh, yeah. But after a while, your tongue gets numb, and your brain gets numb to the flavor, and now you're just eating it. S learn to savor life. 
the chairs that you're sitting in, they're actually pretty comfortable. They could be made out of wood, right? Savor the fact that you are sitting on cushion. When you're eating a pizza, don't just eat the pizza mindlessly. Savor every bite. When you learn to turn on your senses all the time, you become really, really good at it. I tell my students, that if you're practicing in a practice room two, three, five hours a day, and you're practicing mindlessly, I gotta get that passage right, without joy in your heart, then you get really good at performing without joy in your heart. It's like for people who are negative. You ever meet someone who's just constantly negative all the time? They don't get that way overnight. They practice it, <laughs> right? <laughs> it feels kind of good at first, and you go, oh. I'm... And then soon it becomes a pattern for them, the way of thinking. The same thing can happen for joy as well. Train your brain to think optimistically. Sit here right now. We all wear different masks throughout our day for our parents, through our friends, our coworkers. Put on the mask of joy. Be an actor on stage ready to bound out with good news. Can you turn on joy like a light bulb? Try that. Try putting you, yourself in the state of joyfulness. Also externally as well, simply smile. Now you know there are studies out there that show that when you smile, your physiology changes, your heart rate changes, the endorphins are released, you become healthier, and you live longer. So there's a very selfish reason to put yourself in a joyful state, even if you're not in the mood to. So I just want to finish by hopefully sharing with you that you realize the power of joy and that it's within your grasp. All you have to do is decide to take it. I'm reminded of that great phrase in Spider-Man, Peter Parker says, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, the power of joy is enormous. You don't have to let someone else be joyful. You can take it for yourself. And that responsibility is to yourself for the success of your future and the world. Thank you.